What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Black Ops 6 is out. And in this quick optimization guide, I'll show you how to get the best performance out of your game so nothing holds you back. Just keep in mind, this video is not going to touch on Windows settings at all. We're instead going to get straight into the in-game optimization. So for more performance, check the description down below for more guides that will be super useful. For now, from the main menu of Black Ops 6, wherever you are, click the cogwheel in the top right to open up settings and head across to graphics. We'll start on the display tab. First of all, at the very top, your display mode should either be full screen borderless or full screen exclusive. There's not really a difference nowadays between the two. Full screen exclusive should give you slightly better performance, so you can choose that if you wish. If you choose borderless, you won't be able to choose the refresh rate or your resolution, but that's fine. Both of these should match your monitor anyways. If you're on a laptop, your display adapter should be set to your more high performance GPU, in my case, an NVIDIA RTX. Then scrolling down further here, everything else is your preference. If you're on an NVIDIA GPU and you have NVIDIA Reflex low latency, turn this on. If you have a really low powered CPU, choose on plus boost. Scrolling down further here, there's a bunch of different options. I'd recommend changing eco mode to custom, VSync gameplay, turning this off, custom frame rate limit, set whatever options you're comfortable with here. Usually your in-game should be as high as possible and the other two can be pretty much whatever you want. Scrolling down further, reduce menu render resolution, leave this at optimal to generate less heat on the menus. If things look too crusty, you can push it up to native. It affects this sort of animation going on in the background here. Then finally at the bottom, HDR is your preference. You may see a visual improvement on HDR displays by turning it on here. Then scrolling up, restart shaders preloading. I'd recommend you do this after you change all of your graphics options, just to make sure everything's working perfectly optimized for when you get in game. Then the quality tab at the very top is where you'll get the majority of your performance. At the very top, graphics preset, select this and choose minimum. Then leaving everything else as is, upscaling and sharpening, you can choose your favorite here. I like NVIDIA image scaling, but all of these NVIDIA options are only available with NVIDIA GPUs. I'd recommend, other than this, using FSR 3. So in my case, either FSR 3, DLSS, or NIS are good options. This really comes down to what you like. You'll see a similar performance boost from all of these based on whatever preset you have set here. So quality or balance for all of these will give you plus minus the same performance in game. They'll just look slightly different. Then scrolling down further, VRAM target. I'll push all the way up to 90. We want the game to use as much of our system as possible. So you should close background things like browsers and everything you're not using while you're playing the game to make sure the game can get every bit of performance it can. Variable rate shading should be turned on as well. Scrolling down, details and textures leave everything down here as low as possible. At the very bottom, on-demand texture streaming should be minimal and we'll drag everything down to as low as possible. Then local texture streaming low as well. Then based on how much VRAM you have available in the bottom right, I'd recommend cranking your texture resolution all the way up as high as possible to use as much of your graphics card without going over whatever your GPU has, there's a nice graph in the bottom right, for a huge boost in visual quality for free when it comes to performance. You'll see practically no performance impact, no matter what this option is set to, as long as you have enough VRAM. Again, check the bottom right corner. Anisotropic filtering, which fine tunes the details, crank this all the way up to probably high, as it's a super cheap effect with a good visual impact. Then scrolling down here, shadow and lighting, everything as low as possible. And finally, environment, everything as low as possible here. And that's it. We have everything set all the way down for the biggest performance increase in game, as this is a competitive shooter, every little frame matters. If you have a more powerful GPU, feel free to crank up whatever you wish. Then on the view tab at the very top, after applying our changes, motion reduction, leave this as off, field of view, adjust this to whatever your preference is. Yes, this will technically affect your FPS, but it's definitely worth it for the gameplay improvement playing on something you're comfortable with. The same goes for these options over here, field of views, then scrolling down, world motion blur, definitely have this off no matter what. And first person, as well as the other camera movements should be set down to least for the least head bob and stuff like that to yet again improve your visibility while you're playing the game. Then finally, inverted flashbang, I recommend turning this on for a small boost in visibility after you get flashed in game, but of course it'll only do so much. Then we'll click across to the audio tab on the far left, and pretty much no matter what setup you have, I'd recommend looking at the audio mix and setting this down to either headphones, headphones bass boost or bass cut, or sucker punch, which should all give you a tighter dynamic range, meaning explosions are quieter and footsteps are much louder. So Sucker Punch will give you the highest boost in footstep noise, but if you don't like this, choose one of the headset options based on whether you like more or less bass or just don't really care. But now I'll stick to Sucker Punch for the biggest boost in footstep noise. Then scrolling all the way down, 
I'd recommend turning on reduce tinnitus sound just so it's less annoying. Now that we've done everything we need to do, head back to the graphics tab and under display, restart the shaders preloading just to make sure everything's A-OK -okay now that we've adjusted all of our settings. Now for something a little bit more nerdy. We'll close out of the game for now and we'll open up our documents. So inside of your documents, find an open Call of Duty followed by players and then you'll have a bunch of different files. S10 COD24 is Black Ops 6. Inside of here, we'll hit Control F to search. We'll type in Renderer and hit Enter. This should take us to Renderer Worker Count. This will be set to a number and we'll be adjusting this based on what kind of CPU you have. Hit Control Shift and Escape to bring up your Task Manager and on the Performance tab followed by CPU, you'll see a bunch of different graphs or maybe just one graph. Anyways, at the bottom, you'll see cores and logical processes. If you have an older CPU without efficiency cores, then this is going to be super easy for you. Look at the number of cores, take that number, so say eight cores, and inside of this text document, set it to eight or whatever it is, minus one, so seven in that case. As such, then just save this file and close it. If you're like me and you have a CPU with performance and efficiency cores, you'll need to take the name of your CPU, like mine shown up here, Google it, and you'll need to check how many performance cores your system has. In my case, I have 24 cores, eight of which are performance cores and 16 are efficiency cores. So I only have eight cores. Inside of this text document, I'll type in eight minus one, so I'll type in seven. If you have efficiency cores, other background processes on Windows can use them, so in which case you may see better performance from using all of your performance cores, so you don't need to minus one. Anyways, it'll either be your core count or your core count minus one to be safe. So in my case, eight. I'll save this and close it. We can close our file browser, head back into the game for one final tip, and that is in settings, followed by interface at the very bottom, we'll make sure skip introduction movie is turned on to skip the intro video whenever we fire up the game. That's it. If you'd like to find out how to open your NAT and things like that, you'll find a link in the description down below for that, as well as any other optimization and tip videos. If you find that your menus look a little bit weird after this optimization, head back to the graphics tab and make sure that under display, followed by sustainability, the menu resolution is set to optimal or maximum for a better looking main menu. And that's it. Apply your settings and enjoy the game. If you haven't already got an FPS counter in the top left, you can enable it under interface, followed by telemetry and making sure that FPS counter, server latency and packet loss are turned on for all of the important bits of info. After making my changes, I'll be enjoying Black Ops 6 with much higher FPS, getting some good progression in early. Anyways, that's really it for this quick guide. Hopefully you found it useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.